Welcome to the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild. This is part 8, and I've called it the final strip down, because in fact it is the final strip down. We will now see the engine in its component parts. Then I can start building it all back up again, repairing things as I go, and of course degreasing and painting the parts. I think the colour that I'm going to choose is LMS Red or Crimson Lake. There is an engine on YouTube, it's a major beam engine and it's painted in the same colour. It belongs to a chap called Red Rider, or that's what he calls himself on YouTube, and it's the most beautiful major beam engine I've ever seen in every way. Not only the way it runs at 9 or 10 RPM, just the overall finish and the style, it's absolutely wonderful and well worth a look. But in the meantime, back to the land of reality. I'm removing the cylinder cover to have a look at the state of the piston, and generally the bore of the cylinder and other things. I would have to remove this part anyway because I don't want to paint the outside edge of it. As with the rest of the parts on this engine, the nuts are quite easy to remove. Here's the last one coming away now. And a quick tap with the piston in an upward motion should release the cylinder cover. So here it comes and the good news is it's leaving the gasket behind. And here is the piston, complete with its two cast iron rings. Temporarily, I'm replacing the nuts on the studs to just generally see if they fit okay. One or two of them are a little tight. You saw me use a spanner there. And I'm going to have a look into the bore. Now that's very good indeed. In fact, looking at this, this engine's not done much running at all. What I'm doing here is just winding some masking tape around the piston to protect the piston rings, to stop them getting any grit in there, or even getting damaged. Now it's time to take the inlet manifold off. This is just a bent piece of copper pipe and a flange that goes onto the steam chest. So I'm removing the four nuts that hold the flange onto the steam chest, first of all with a spanner, and then I use a box key to remove the nut in its entirety. The problem with these box keys is they're not very good at getting right into the corner because they're quite clumsy and a bit big for the job. What I often do when I show this later is a machine a little bit off the end and it allows the box key to get further in on the nut. I also do this on some of the small sockets that I have, because it allows the socket to get closer in to get a grip on the nut. But I must stress that by doing this, it makes the socket or box key very weak, so you really have to slacken off the nut with a spanner first, and just spin it off with the box key or the socket. I've got rather large hands, in fact, most of my parts, not all of them, but most of my parts are quite large so it's easier using a box key than my giant fingers. Although I'm actually quite nimble, sometimes I surprise myself. Possibly it's because I'm a keyboard player. The valve actuating arms are the next things to go, starting with unscrewing the top nut and removing it so the crossbar can be removed. I really am concerned about these bearing blocks that hold the bell crankshaft down to the bed plate. This is just very bad workmanship that I wouldn't expect on an engine of this quality. As you can see, the holes are not in the centre of the bearings, and to compensate for this, the builder has drilled the holes for the studs in the bed plate off centre. So what I'm going to have to do is remove the studs, plug the holes, re-drill them, re-machine the bearings, and take it from there. Over now to the cylinder, the first thing to go is the drain cock at the bottom, and then I'm going to remove the exhaust pipe. And here you see the box key, and here you see the box key that I've turned down slightly so I can get in in order to remove these very small nuts from this very tight area. It's a very simple modification, but it's well worth doing. I'm putting the nuts back in place on the studs just so I don't lose them. Now it's time to look at removing the cylinder. This is held down by bolts to the bed plate, and when I look underneath, they're not threaded into the bed plate, they're actually bolts going through that are held by nuts. Really, I would have thought studs would have looked better. The two nuts in the centre I'm not sure about. I'll remove them and see. Ah, see what it is now. They're holding a large plug that sits up inside the cylinder. This is a very good design. Not only is the cylinder held on the outer perimeter by these bolts, it's held in the middle by a large metal block. This makes for a very strong cylinder mounting, very strong indeed. I'll just remove all the bolts from round the edge. I think what I'll also do is remove the gasket, because if I don't do that, it's likely to get damaged and I will have to make another one. Oddly enough, the gasket seems to be stuck to the middle part more than anything, so I'll remove both of them, then separate the gasket, which I'll put in a safe place, and the safest place I can think of 
is on my old PC power supply from a 286 that powers my mini drill. I'm just refitting the nuts to the plug so I don't lose them either. This cast iron plug is very well machined and fits perfectly in the cylinder and it even has a casting recess which stops it from fouling and blocking the steam port. So that's about it really. If you look at all the parts on the bench I really would like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful at this point. But no, there's quite a lot more work to do yet. I'll put the lovely piece of brass just so you can see how well made this is. So I now have a kit of parts, some good, some bad, but eventually it will turn into a very nice engine. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.